This is the Technical Difficulties. We are playing Two of These People Are Lying because two of these people will be Chris Joel. Lies all the way down. Gary Brannan. <gasps> I've wet him. <laughs> Matt Gray. As usual, I haven't prepared any humour, but I have prepared a description. Uh, the way this game works is three of us have written down a name of a Wikipedia article on one of these cards. Tom's now going to pick out one of the cards, and we will all make it look like we wrote that down on the card, but two of us will be lying. And we are talking about Wellington Paranormal. <laughs> Wellington Paranormal. <laughs> now, we have, we have previously uh, had articles <laughs> like Windy City Open where what? it's very clear what all the words mean and it's just a case of the details around it. But in this case... Oh, Jesus Christ almighty! Wellington Paranormal. And because uh, it's been a while... Just to stress to the readers at home here, we now have to make something <laughs> up if it's not our article, obviously. In the time it's taken you to read that. <laughs> Gary. Yes. I thought that might happen. I deserved it. Good padding, don't get me wrong. <laughs> Wellington Paranormal. It's not padding, it's not the 80s. Shoulder pads joke, I'm giving you more time. I don't need it. Fine, I'm, I'm, I'm giving myself go. more time. <laughs> Wellington Paranormal is a competition. It's a good start. Shouldn't it have open in it? F off, F off, I'm working. <laughs> it's a competition, it's a parachute competition held for a propeller-driven aircraft. I can see every detail of that. As opposed to the stunt competition that was held on a day after. The Halifax Paris stunt. Correct, <laughs> thank you. Now, I recognise you, you've set up a propeller there to imply like that that's dangerous, but uh, like, yeah, you don't want to parachute out of a jet plane. Like, yes, it, it... Like they always do? Well, was, you very specifically said out of a propeller-driven Because it's a Wellington bomber that they were parachuting out of. Okay, so it is a parachute competition out of a Wellington bomber. All right, we'll come back to that in a minute. Uh, Chris, Wellington Paranormal. A television programme. Oh, okay. That's all the detail we're getting right now. Matt? It is a football or soccer team in New Zealand. How many oh. of you thought we'd go for something about ghosties then, eh? Right, okay. Well, let's, <clears throat> let's go with Gary then. Um, parachute competition out of a Wellington bomber. You know, there's that meme, isn't there, like the Simpsons of the entire class turning around to watch someone. <laughs> <laughs> That's where we're at right now. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we're, we're definitely at that. The Go thing on. is, I don't know enough about aviation <laughs> or aircraft or specifically a... Well, I'm going to be honest, I'm not even convinced there is such a thing as a Wellington bomber. You could be having For me on with that. For chucking gumboots out. Right, yeah. That's how we will know. Uh, on the assumption that the Wellington bomber... The, the, okay, okay, okay. The, let's, let's the let's... Australian version of that plane is the UG bomber. <laughs> Now it's the Welly Boomer. <laughs> <laughs> not, not, not Australia again. Let's just not. Let's just. Let's just not. <laughs> but on the assumption that Wellington Bomber is is a genuine thing, it is. The Wellington Bomber is known. It's, a, it's one of the first uh, mass-produced bombers of the Second World War that was in the RAF. Well known for its very light methods of construction. It's basically made of canvas. Effectively, it's made of canvas stretched over wood. It, it was that kind of thing. And it was well known for its ability to fly at lower speeds, therefore suitable for parachuting. Post-war, you've got a lot of men that are trained up for jumping, you know, with parachutes on that would do stunt display. Well, stunt displays the other competition. This is just a parachuting display, which is all about accuracy and landing on things. So it's a way for trained parachutists to display their ability by jumping out the back of a Wellington bomber. And it's fine jumping out the back of a propeller-driven thing because the propellers tend to be in front of you. Yes, yeah. I, I, I have jumped out of a plane in the past. You do not jump in front of the propellers. Is that that a, is generally a considered a bad move. <laughs> Don't use the front door! Oh, God. Chris, <laughs> a TV Hello. program, and that was all the details I got for Wellington yeah, Paranormal, it, 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 a TV it program. It is a television program set in Wellington, New Zealand, wherein two normal police officers frequently come up against paranormal activity. We are going to mention it! Oh, there we go. Starring Taika Waititi and What's-His-Face out of Flight of the Concords. Uh, Jermaine Clement. Uh, yes. Here's the thing. I thought that's all rubbish. You're not going to set something in New Ze in, in Wellington, New Zealand. It's a fairly small city, you know. But but now you've sort of like I think I've got a vague memory of seeing this. So if you've made this up, that is incredibly convincing. I think I might just be remembering what we do in the shadows. But 
What do you do in the shadows, Tom? It's not caught on the cameras, is it? That's the thing. <laughs> if you've made this up, you have successfully convinced me it's a real TV show now. So that's... He's very good at pointing out how the game works. He's, he's getting it. It's <laughs> literally my job. <laughs> Matt. Hello. Oh. It's a football team in New Zealand. In the same Wellington. Yep. I'd be surprised if it wasn't. It's a big shoe. <laughs> is there not a left and a right Wellington? It is not a big team. No. And the reason it gets its name Paranormal is because it previously disbanded and then um, the remains of the people who were left um, rose up and created the new team. Oh. <laughs> rose. Metaphorically. Right. Metaphorically, yes. So there were two people left over of the team and then they, you know, rounded up some more players. I don't know what that's called in football. Employed. It's a Ute muster, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Boot muster. Uh, <laughs> and... Um, they were saying that it was haunted because it rose up from the other one. And in their logo, obviously, they have a ghost. No, they don't. It's just a W. It's really boring. I'd have put a bloody... Because uh, oh, right. you can do a W in a ghost and it can be the bottom of the ghost. That's how I... That's, oh, I saw yeah. that. I thought, you can draw a like, line yeah. around that, around the top and turn it into a ghost. But they didn't. Oh, yeah. Yeah, having looked through the article, it was mostly a bit short and a bit dull because it was about football. <laughs> the only other thing I can think of that I saw in there was their kit. They have a dark purple top and white shorts. Gary, I haven't got to do this in a while. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm going to cover five, my so eyes. This is going to be flamboyant. <laughs> yeah, he's just like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I just don't think that parachuting competitions out of a Wellington bomber would be a thing. And if it would, they would use the word paranormal. I just, it's a little too far-fetched. I really appreciate the visual gag and the effort that I think you went to to come up with it, but I don't think it's that. Chris, I, this is, I'm genuinely if nothing angry else, about I made this. him pull that face. Yeah, <laughs> I'm genuinely, because, it, because if this isn't right, you've somehow given me a false memory of something I saw on the internet once. And Matt, like, I, I can entirely believe that a team in Wellington would call themselves the Wellington Paranormal because it's New Zealand and that's absolutely a thing that could happen. But I think I'm going to go for Chris. I think it's you. Am I right? It is me. Oh. <laughs> and it's even a spin-off of what we do in the shadows. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I picked it entirely because I knew it would do that with the words that were there. Yes. Which is just completely... All right, you go pick a new article. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> we'll be back in a minute. Chris has gone and got himself a new article. It is in this pile here. And our second article is... Austol. Austol. You know what? It's, it's that. It's that word there. Let's start with Matt this time. Matt, what is that? <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, it's a problem. <laughs> it's a brand of motor oil. <laughs> okay. Brand of motor oil. <laughs> Matt, you've turned purple. You should have a go on this side of the table once. <laughs> I can tell you that's not mine. <laughs> that's not nothing. <laughs> Welcome well, to one of these on. people is lying. <laughs> that's, that's either a bit of a giveaway that'll give me another point or the best bit of lying we've seen. Uh, Gary, uh, Austell, oh, Austell? A, 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 the Saint. Saint Austell. Yes. Like the town in Cornwall. Don't f***ing no, read the article that's, before that's, I've done it. That's Ousel. Chris. It's an Austrian metal polish. Matt. Nice. <laughs> Gonna be a real short half, guys. <laughs> it's a brand of motor oil. Swedish. Swedish. Mm -hmm. It has a on the the logo. I'm going for pictures again, but I remember pictures that are better than I do words. Um, it's got a picture of a truck on it, um, with a what they called like corn on the cob, but not on the cob in the in the in the leaves. A corn stalk. Corn. It's corn plant. Corn stalk. Okay. <laughs> there we go. Yeah. Corn on a stick. <laughs> corn sticks. <laughs> so it's got one of those on it. Uh, on the side of the truck, on the logo, and it says Austol at the bottom, and then some Swedish. If you hadn't done the intro where you said, that's not mine, <laughs> I'd be believing that right now. <laughs> and the trouble is that 
I now worry that that was just a really good bit of acting <laughs> to set things up and, and distract me. So, <laughs> Gary. Yes. Austell? Austell? Yes, a saint, 6th century saint, um, who was Cornish, hence St. Austell. So, yeah, they're, they're, I mean, it's, it's spelled differently, but that happens all the time. Like, it, yeah, St. Austell. Phonetically be... similar. Yeah. Uh, any particular details of the saint's life? What was it? What was he sanctified for? Is that a word? Ooh. Beatified is the Thank word you, you are right. looking for. Um, not entirely sure. I can't remember it being in the article. Um, there are links with France. Were you saying jewel for France? <laughs> oh, I, uh, you done France? <laughs> I Hello, know. you have done a fraud. This was this was like Wikipedia, not like the Catholic encyclopedia. Oh, service the... two sausages. <laughs> L'Oignon! <laughs> oh, you mean you were scrolling down and there were links to France? Well, there will be. Oh, the not links, links to France. To... Oh. oh, God. No, no. Oh, no patron France. saint of the Channel Tunnel. Brittany, Tom? because if, if you, there's kind of No, he was called Nigel. <laughs> there are similarities between Cornwall and, and France. Yes, they're oh. both in the cell. Hold on, hold on, hold on. That's <laughs> both in the cell. I'm going to unpack that. I thought you were worried you would. Uh, <laughs> there are similarities between Cornwall and France. Northern... This isn't relevant to the article. <laughs> I just want to hear you justify that statement. Because uh, Northern, well, Southern Cornwall and Northern France are both fishing communities. So there are very much similarities in the way that they do things. They fish in the same water, ain't they? You were doing so well. <laughs> No, <laughs> not it's got really. Fish in it. All, all of the oceans join up, Tom. Which They're all the it? same water. No, That's no, true. no. There's, there's one of the Cornish saints that washes up on a door, isn't there? And they're from France. That's Titanic. No, it's <laughs> not. <laughs> they don't wash up. Ah, uh, true. <laughs> they have Cornwall. people to do Hang that on for a them. Hang on a minute. That might be Saint Patrick. Hang on. Uh, there's one of them anyway that washes up on a door. All right, Chris, an Austrian. I can't read my handwriting. Metal polish metal is polish. what you can't read. That is read what it there. says. Yeah, I'll find that a bit clearer. Metal polish. Tell me about it. It was developed in the 1890s, um, as sort of industry became heavier. It had smaller silicate chunks in it, so Ooh. you could use it at higher speeds and higher temperatures without damaging what you were polishing. Meaty silicate chunks. No, not meaty <laughs> no. silicate chunks. No, if they're smaller. meaty, something's going very wrong with the machinery. That's fingers. <laughs> silicate chunks, what, what do they do? So polishers work because they have little bits, of essentially grit oh, in okay. them. It, polishing is tiny, tiny scratching. Yeah, okay. The finer the sort of granules are, in this case silicates, um, the, well... Either the finer the finish is, or the more readily you can use it at high RPMs, because if you imagine dropping a brick onto a sander and rattling it around, yes, okay. and then imagine dropping a grain of sand. Yes. Fair. Okay. So this is, again, something where I, I, I have a reason to discount each of you. <laughs> Chris, I think this is just something from your memory that you've come up with and, and locked to the name. Gary, I think it'd be St. Austell. I, I, I think... You're, you're kind of back-solving from stuff that in your memory. But Matt, you also literally said, this is mine, which is a shame, because if you hadn't said that, I would absolutely be going for your brand of motor oil, even though that's clearly just taking the brand name Castrol and putting Oz on it in front. It's, yeah. it's almost like I was doing a trick to make yeah. you think it wasn't me, isn't it? Almost like that. Almost, but it was really convincing. Are you saying I can't act normally when I have a history of making you believe that my lies are true on this exact programme. <laughs> Matt, I think it's you. Am I right? No, I had absolutely oh! no idea where to go when that came out. That's why I started laughing, because I was like, what the f*** am I going to say for that? I thought you got into a giggle loop. Ah, oh, okay. I had, because there was nothing I could think of at all. Then, Chris, it's got to be you, surely. Hasn't got to be, and it isn't. Gary? F*** you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Is it the saint from St. Austell? It is basically the saint from St. Austell, I bet it was really annoying when I backsold that earlier. Really it was, yeah. <laughs> and then didn't believe, believe it. it. Is it the saint from St. Austell? Me, internally. Oh, sh this is going to be quick. You, 10 minutes later, well, it couldn't possibly be that. <laughs> no, 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 no. I think it's you who literally said it wasn't yours and spent five minutes trying to come Escaping up with something. <laughs> Gary was extremely good at not convincing me, which wasn't meant to be the game, but apparently it is now. <laughs> do we care about points? Because I no. don't think we do anymore. No. 
And do we care about not having an outro? No. Still no. 